Welcome to Americana Archives. Today we have part one of the story with the headline, Policeman's Adventures. The subheadline says, Members of the Force tell of their most dangerous experiences with lawbreakers. Today's installment is entitled, A Capture in Mid-River. It says, You'll have to go back a good ways if you want to hear this little story about myself, said Larry Hazen, the veteran chief of detectives. It happened in 1854. I remember, said one of the young bucks facetiously. That was during the last Indian uprising, when the Los Santaville tribe went on the rampage. You're too darn smart, growled Larry. There were plenty of Indians about here, though, at that time. They used to come down to the canal, and then they'd take them to the river and ship them out west, say to Kansas City. Kansas City was a great ways off in those days. But I wanted to tell you about my little adventure. I was running the river beat. Charlie Ryder was my partner. A great big lanky fell, strong as an ox, interposed Ed Moses. That's the fell, one of the best that ever lived. He and I ran the river beat for many a year. I got him on the police force. Snellbaker was mayor, and I went in one day and asked him to put Charlie on. They told me he was a Whig or a Republican or something or other and cussed me for recommending him. But I didn't know or care anything about his politics. Damn his politics, I said to Snellbaker. He's a good fellow, and I want him for a partner, so I got him. I remember on the day that I referred to, a boat came in. I believe it was called the Scioto. There was a rush of hackmen and expressmen and draymen to the wharf, and some hackmen got into an altercation with another fellow, and drew an iron spike out of the gangplank and hit him on the head. Just crushed his skull and he fell into the water, but they managed to pull him out. I heard something about the excitement and rushed down to see about it. You see, I was all right back in the 50s, a pretty hefty sort of a cuss, not much afraid of anything. When they saw me coming, the heckman tried to make a way. Run, shouted someone, and nimble as a cat, he ran. Then they let down the yawl for him, and before you could say Jack Robinson, he was in it and pulling for dear life for the other side. Well, I could see he wasn't much of a sailor. Just then, a man came rowing along in a skiff. Hi there, I shouted, and up he came. I got into the skiff, and we struck out after the hackman. We overhauled him just about in the middle of the stream. If you come near me, I'll brain you, he cried, raising his oar. The oar was too long to do good service, and I warded off the blow. Then I grabbed that fellow, and with one good jerk, I just lifted him out of his boat into mine. The shore was lined with people who had watched the chase and who had seen the fight on the waves. You ought to have heard the shout that went up when I jerked that fellow over into our boat. I pulled my gun on him then, and he begged for his life. I told him I had a good notion to blow his head off for the trouble he'd put me to, but I didn't blow off anything more than my mouth. Our skiff was a little too light for the three of us, so I made him get back into the yawl while we towed the skiff in. Well, sir, the people on the shore were crazy with excitement. The reception that they gave me was the biggest thing that ever came off on the riverbank. Yes, sir. It was bigger than the reception the soldiers got when they returned from the Mexican War. My partner, Ryder, had more than his hands full to keep the crowds back. They made me think that I was a terrible fellow, and it kind of swelled my brain. After that, when any of those rivermen would get into any difficulty, I didn't have to do anything more than whisper to them to keep them quiet. They were afraid of me. It gave me a reputation among them that helped me wonderfully. The case didn't amount to much after all. The fellow that had been hit recovered, and the fellow that I captured didn't go to the penitentiary. But I've often thought of that struggle on the river and the reception that was accorded me on the shore. This story came from the great state of Ohio, being reported in the Cincinnati Commercial Gazette of July 21st, 1895. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to continue to uncover all of America's lost and forgotten history, then remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.